Your A's, get your A's, your boys are back here with another video, and in this video today, guys, we're going to be going over and ranking our top 10 budget cards in NBA 2K24, my team. Now, my first question to you guys would be, what do you consider budget? I came to the conclusion that less than 15,000 MT is it needs to be considered budget because it is so hard to pay 20,000 MT for budget cards. When you're talking about budget cards, you'd have to go 25,000 MT if you want to start talking about the amethyst that I really like. So if you want to, again, if you want to start talking about some of the better amethysts that we've gotten recently, like Anthony Black, Peyton Watts, and those type of guys, you're looking at above 20,000 MT. And for me, I cannot count that as far as budget, guys. So I went with 15,000 MT and not including free cards. These are my top 10. We're going to start it off at number 10 with Mitchell Robinson. Now, if we're talking value, Mitchell Robinson's got to be top five as far as value cards in my team. Budget-wise, when you're ranking them on how good they are, he's still in the top 10. 81 three ball, 73 speed, good interior, solid rebounding, really solid defense. I mean, the card can go out there and compete. If you need a center to start your squad, this is the card I recommend picking up because for 3,000 MT, you're not going to get better than Mitch Robinson. You're not. It all starts and ends with that release. Has such a smooth release. The Mitchell Robinson base so good this year. It's why I think Taco is going to be fantastic down the road. But I mean, there's just no flaws. Defensively solid, offensively can stretch the court, can shoot the ball. He comes in at my number 10. At my number nine, another really cheap guy, Emerald Dyson Daniels. I had to find a point guard to plug in here. Dyson Daniels, the guy I went with. Now I know his three ball is not super high, but it has a good release. MJ dribble style, solid ball handling and really solid defensively. Is he the best point guard in the game? I know I say that a lot, but no. Is he top 10? No. Is he top 15? No. But he is 1,500 MT. You need a point guard to start your team. Can't be your primary bundler, but can knock down shots, play defense. Dyson Daniels is exactly that. Again, when you talk about value, you got to mention Dyson Daniels in your top five or so. For 1,000 MT, so tough to beat what he does for you guys on the court. At my number eight, we're plugging in Rui Hachimura. Now, for Rui, it all starts and ends with that release. 83 three ball, fantastic release, and just low 80 stat-wise all across the board. Like, here's my thing. Get Rui, give him a three ball shoe, give him speed acceleration, maybe lateral quickness. Before you know it, all of those stats are in the mid to upper 80s, and then you're looking at an Fan, a fantastic small four because again for Rui it all starts and ends with that release movement wise dribbling not that great for Rui Hachimura but just as far as an overall card and what he gives you on the court he is fantastic coming in at my number eight at my number seven looking a little more expensive here we're playing in Ruby Caleb Houston a newer guy here that did come out I don't know January 17th so a few weeks ago 92 3 ball 86 speed a really good lateral quickness you want to talk about 3D players in my team, you got to mention Caleb Houston's name. Devin Booker release on normal, pretty good. Pro dribble style, basic leaner. The card is not perfect, but when you're looking at him badge-wise, stat-wise, height-wise, he can do a lot of things on the court. The one thing Caleb Houston can't do that hurts his value is he can't be a primary bundler. So you're looking at a guy on the court that's literally a 3 and D option. That's exactly what Caleb Houston is, which is fine. But just know, just realize, he is not going to go out there and be a primary Mary Boy, another for you guys. Coming in at my number six, Ruby Nicholas Claxton. Still makes the top 10. I, again, I've lost some hype over Nicholas Claxton as times went on, but I still respect it. It all starts with the 88 three ball. I do think you got to give him some good badges. I do think that his release is on the slower side of things, but when you look at his defense specifically, it is tough to beat what Nicholas Claxton does provide on the court. Really solid defensively. His release does take a long time to wind up all those types of things. But I, I like Nicholas Claxton. I think this card can do a lot of things at a high level. And for me, when I'm looking at things, it's tough to beat what Nicholas Claxton does for rubies on the court. Again, going to knock down open shots, play good defense. Is he perfect? No. And a lot of it comes down to that release just being that little bit too slow. Cracking our top five, we're plugging in Isaac Okoro at my number five here. Now, 
Akoro, one of the newer cards that did come out. I have no issues with the card. Release-wise, fine. Speed, good. Defense, good. My thing with Isaac Okoro would be this. He just doesn't do anything on the court that is just like next level good. And maybe part of my problem is I'm comparing him a lot to Peyton Watson and that's just not fair. But a lot of shooting guards are taller. A lot of shooting guards can be your primary. And, and I know Okoro can probably be your secondary. But when you're looking at a primary, he I know he can get it, but doesn't come with unpluckable. He doesn't even come with, you know, some of those other badges that you might want, which hurts the card's value. I know he's going to shoot the ball well. I know he's going to play defense, has great hot spots. I really like Okoro, but he's only 6'5". I don't know. Maybe I need to see more with Okoro. I, I got him on my no money spent squad series. And I still don't know if I'm using him a ton. And maybe I just didn't have success in my first game with him and should have gave him another try, try. I don't know. You guys can let me know down below in the comments. I like Okoro. He's at my number five. I just don't think the card is better than this guy right here. And Brandon Miller at my number four. Now, this is a personal preference one for me to have Brandon Miller over Isaac Okoro. Two polar opposite players. And, and, and hear me out. Brandon Miller, he's 6'9". Isaac Okoro, he's 6'5". So, I mean, that's already not even fair to compare Okoro to Brandon Miller, considering B-Mill is way taller. But my thing is this. I think Brandon Miller does things at the same type of level. Brandon Miller base, good. D-Bug dribble style, good. 7,500 MT. Hot spots forever. We're going to defend better because of the height. I just think it's tough because Okoro badge-wise is better than Brandon Miller. I think it is preference-based. For me, I thought when I used Brandon Miller, he looked better for me on the court than Isaac Okoro. I like both cards. I think both cards can play. But when it comes down to it, I do think Brandon Miller is slightly better. A card I think is, is better than both of them. Shout out DBG, Julian Strother. Call me crazy. Here's what you're looking at. 6'6", six, 6'9", six, six, wingspan. Badge-wise, very close to what Okoro is going to do for you guys on the court. Gold Limitless, great defensively. Good three ball. AI dribble style. Normal leaner. Strother base on normal. I'm going to be honest. Whether you like Okoro, Brandon Miller, Julian Strother. Start bench cut, whatever you want. Like, that's honestly one of the main reasons I stopped doing start bench cut. Because people would be like, Strother, Okoro, or Brandon Miller. And I'm thinking to myself, guys, they're all basically on the same level. They all are literally like the exact same card. It's preference-based. Like, I'm not even going to sit here and say you're going to have more success with one over the other because they're literally all the same. None of them can be primaries. They're all going to be solid defensively and secondary ball handlers. That's what all of them are. So rank them however you want. I'm going to rank them Strother 1, Female 2, Okoro 3. That's my personal ranking. At my number two... Ruby Jalen sucks. Until somebody gives me a better budget point guard, this card's going to run the point guard position for the budget guys for the foreseeable future. Even, obviously, I, look, if you're running Jalen Suggs, you should be running Franz Wagner. And I'm just going to talk about it with the duo. Look at it. He gets Hall of Fame Agent 3, Catch and Shoot, Hall of Fame Blow by Endos for Days, Hyperdrive, Unpluckable, Fast Switch, Fearless Finisher, Slithery, Defense Fleet, absolutely just fine. Gets a 93 three ball. Even without the duo, guys, Jalen Suggs, still absolutely elite. Still absolutely incredible. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't even think there's a budget point guard in my team as it stands right now that's on a same level as Jalen Suggs. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me another budget point guard that you're like, you know what? They're close to being on the same level as Jalen Suggs. Tell me. Because I'll wait. Who are you going to say? You're going to tell me Patrick Beverly? You're going to tell me, uh, you know, uh, Jay Williams? You, who, who is on the same level? Dennis Johnson? Maybe Dennis Johnson? But I mean, I'm telling you, give me... Jalen Suggs by a wide margin over the number two budget point guard in the entire game. And coming in as my number one budget guard in the entire game, Ruby Franz Wagner. Now they go hand in hand. Franz, Jalen Suggs with the duo. That's what I'd recommend, especially if you're a bowling on a budget. It doesn't get much better. Franz release is immaculate. Defensively is really solid. He's 6'10 at the shooting guard, small forward position, D-book, triple style. You can't take one without the other. It's really that simple. Franz, Jalen Suggs together make such an immaculate budget duo that, I mean, if you're not running them, you're doing something wrong. Now, by themselves, again, they'd both probably be in the top five by themselves. And I think that's what makes them so good. It's like, yes, I do obviously recommend, you know, running the duo. It, it would just make sense for you guys too. But without the duo, 
both cards are absolutely incredible as well. So this is my top 10 budget cards in NBA 2K24, my team. Let me know your thoughts on these cards down below in the comments. Who was I too high on, low on, and ultimately, who did I leave off that you guys would have included? Drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.